Shang Wang Shang Wang Ka Hanga Inga Anga Hawa Nai Yahawa Ba Shim Yao Sha Ba Shim Rakakadash Double Nuns to the Elves and Apostles of Great Millstone Rue Well And as always we give peace and citation to the hopeful light that's scattered abroad Pushing this truth with our rights and sincerity To you sincere brothers To you I say Shang Wang And to the Aqua the few sisters that are listening and learning To you I say Shang Wang this is Brother Andre coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shin Yao Shai. Lord willing to edify and feed the lens of Yahweh Shin Yao Shai. And this lesson, I really don't know what I want to entitle this lesson, but this lesson is going to be entitled, you know, this lesson is going to be dealing with the punishment of the heathen Gentile nations and, of course, Esau Edom because their punishment is coming pretty soon, all right? And you know that punishment. All right, and their punishment is slavery. All right, because what happened to us? All right, we went down. All right, and all the nations had a hand in our captivity. Okay, all right. So hey, all the nations that had a hand in our captivity, hey, they're going into slavery, like it says in Jeremiah thirty and seven. All right, and of course, uh, Revelations thirteen verse nine and ten. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so. Without further ado, let's get into this lesson. Lord one this lesson be edifying. Okay? So, all the nations that had a hand in our captivity and had a hand in our affliction. Okay? Because when we didn't, because when we went down as a nation, all the nations rejoiced over us going down. Okay? If you don't know who your adversaries are, man, the enemies of our adversaries, let's get it. Let's go to Psalms. Okay. The 83rd chapter. All right. Let's read about these adversaries. <clears throat> this is Psalms 83 and 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. All right. They lift up their head. They lift up their head in pride. All right. So these nations now, they're trying to do the same thing now. Starting with Esau, even the so-called white race, man. All right. So this devil's trying to inject us with the uh the jab and then eventually the microchip all right esau Edom is mad because he didn't get the blessing okay and really he didn't want the blessing no way he hated his blessing so you know after jacob supplanted him for his you know esau's blessing you know he was mad all right and let's prove that you know let, let's prove that let's put a bookmark here might have made this lesson longer let's go to genesis Chapter 27 and verse 38. I'm starting verse 38 because, you know, this is after uh, Isaac, okay, Jacob and Esau's father blessed uh, Jacob first. And then Esau, you know, actually, I'm going to start at the... Uh, uh, I'm going to start at verse 36. All right, Genesis 27 and 30, 36. And he said, this is Esau speaking, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing, which is absolutely not true. Okay, because Jacob, because if you go and read Genesis, the 25th chapter, man, okay, you can do that on your own time, man, because, hey, look, the blessing was already promised that it should the elder shall serve the younger. And who came out first? Esau Edom. Like it says, Esau came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they call his name Esau. And okay. And then Jacob came out last. So the elder is supposed to serve the younger. So the blessing was already promised to go to Jacob. Okay. But the Lord loving, you know, drama. So he made, you know, this is. The Lord Yahweh Shai's movie, man. Okay, so hey, he wanted that to happen. Okay, and plus, Esau hated his blessing. Okay, he didn't want his blessing. All right, and now these devils today, all right, they're trying to get the blessing back in a carnally sense of manner. They're trying to get it back carnally. All right, trying to perform their new world order. Trying to get, you know, they're trying to eliminate Jake. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna read further into this. All right. He took away my birthright and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? 
And Isaac answered and said unto him, Esau, behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren I have given to him for servants. And with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? All right, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. <laughs> Esau started crying, man. <laughs> he started whining, man. All right, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the whole dew of heaven from above. All right, which means they will have the fatness of the earth. They will have all everything. They will be ruining the earth. Okay. And a lot of folks that say that Japheth, you know, is Esau. Even. That's not true, man. Okay. Ja Esau even is not Japheth. Okay. Japheth wasn't promised the fatness of the earth. It was two people that was promised the fatness of the earth. Esau and Jacob. Esau is now ruling and his rulership is about to come to an end. And now Jacob is about to become, you know, the new rulers of the earth, man. Okay. The earth is about to be given back to, into the hands of, all right, of Jacob, which is the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Which we're going to get into. Okay. So, like it says in 2 Israel 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that falleth. There you go. And we got that scripture. I know I quoted it, but hey, you got to prove these things. All right. <clears throat> Verse 40. And by thy sword thou shalt live. You see, who lives by the sword? Esau Edom. Okay. And thou shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou sh shalt have dominion. All right, which they do now, okay, because like it says in Job 9, 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And they did that because we drove them back into the caves, all right, for a thousand years. And we, all right, Israel, Jacob, all right, the Israelites, we ruled in England, we ruled all over the earth for a thousand years. And then after that thousand year period was up, Esau, Edom, all right, the Edomites, they came out of the caves and they during the Renaissance period and they start ruling again. Okay, we're in Esau's kingdom. Okay, well, what's left of it basically, because <laughs> it's going down anyway. Uh, verse forty-one. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, "The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob." Okay. And if you don't know, Esau is the reincarnation of uh, Abel. And of course, not Abel, Snocky, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. Esau is the reincarnation of Cain and Jacob is the reincarnation of Abel. Because if you go back to Genesis, the fourth chapter, okay, Cain slew his brother Abel. And he tried, Cain tried to cut that bloodline off then. So, hey, and then... You know, Seth came in, and of course, then let's continue on. All right, you can go read about that on your own John, okay? But like, man, hey, these devils trying to slay us again. Like it says, then I will slay my brother Jacob. Esau is trying to slay his brother Jacob again, all right? Because he didn't get the birthright, and these devils are hurt, all right? <laughs> That's why they messing with our videos, they taking down lessons and everything. So hey. That's okay. Let's get this. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. Because there is no repentance for Esau Edom. Esau Edom cannot repent. Okay. Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. You see, Esau sold his birthright, man. Jacob didn't steal his birthright. Esau sold it. <laughs> and these devils, they're trying to get it back in a carnal manner, okay? Verse 17, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, see? For he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. And he heard, like he saw, he lifted up his voice and wept, because he know <laughs> he messed up. But that's his own fault, man. That's Esau's own fault. 
That's you eat them ice, man. You eat them ice can't handle losing. It's not in you to lose. All right? You can't handle being oppressed. You can't handle losing. Okay? But, hey, sad to say, you're losing your kingdom. Your kingdom is falling. The curses that is once on Jacob is now going on to you. Now you're feeling the heat. And you Edomites can't handle it, man. Like it says in Deuteronomy 37. And all these curses, you know, let's get it. I won't butcher it. So let's just get it. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. I'm going to go back to Psalms 83. Deuteronomy 37. And the Lord God of thy power will put all these curses upon thy enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Who hates us? Esau, Enoch. And all the other nations, and all the other nations, hey, I'm going into captivity along with Esau Edom. But Esau Edom is going to be the lowest of the low in the kingdom. And we're going to continue to find that out. Let's go back to Psalms, 83rd chapter. <clears throat> Psalms, 83rd chapter, in the second verse. I'm going to read that again. For lo, thy enemies make a turmoil. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? All right. The Israelites, man. The so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They're trying to cut us off now. Okay. By what? Their jabs. And then eventually that microchip. All right. They're going to try to get some. They're going to try to get the elect, but it ain't going to work, man. Okay? Verse 5. They have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. And here's the nations. The tavern. Let me clear this. I quit. All right. The tabernacles of Edom. The Edomites, the so-called white race. The Ishmaelites, the so-called Arabs of Moab, so-called Chinese. And the Hagarines, those are more Arab nations. Ball. Um, I think that's I think that's Ham I think that's Hamite Hamite Nation or Edom it might be I don't know Ammon the so called Chinese and Amalek eat another Edomite Nation because Amalek is the head tribe of Esau or Edom okay the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyrese those are the Hamite Nations Assure also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. Okay, so there you go. All these nations that had a hand in our captivity and for the affliction. Let's get that. And Zechariah 1 and verse 15, I believe. Yes, God, right to it. <laughs> the water y'all busting y'all shot. Zechariah 1 and 15, and I am sore. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased. They have helped forward the affliction. They helped to forward the affliction. They joined along with Esau Edom to help to forward the Israelites' affliction, man. Okay? And those heathens that helped to forward our affliction, they got hell coming to them too. They don't get a free pass. Okay? They going into captivity too. Let's get into it, man. Now you know who your enemies are. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see. What I want to go to. Mm, let's start here. All right. This is Jeremiah 25 and verse um, 27. Therefore thou shalt say unto them. Thus said the Lord Yahweh shall have hosts, the power of Israel, drink ye, and be drunken, and spill, and fall, and rise no more because of the sword which I will send among you. Okay, and the Lord is about to send his sword, the ICBM nuclear missiles, and of course, the laser cherry fire, man. Okay, it shall be if they refuse to take the cup that thy hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord, Yahweh shall have hosts. Ye shall certainly drink. All right, they're going to drink that cup of slavery, the cup of racism, everything that the Israelites went through. All the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The heathen, including Esau Edom, is going to have to go through it. But Esau Edom is going to get the worst end of that stick, man. 
Esau is going to get the worst end of the captivity. They're going to be severely punished. All right. After the heathens, the other different other nations, after they serve their thousand years, they're going to go back into their own lands. And they're going to live in peace. They're going to have to follow the Israelites rules, the commandments of the Bible. All right. Hey, they're going to do it. And they're going to have to live by us. But as for Esau, you know, there is no mercy for Esau, even the so-called white race. After they serve their hardcore, severe punishment, because they're going to have to receive double for what they've done. They're going to, hey, Obadiah verse 18, and I'm going to get that. <clears throat> um, verse 29. For lo, I will begin to bring evil up, evil on the city which is called, which is called by my name, and should ye be utterly unpunished, ye shall not be unpunished. For I will call for a sword upon all the habitations of the earth, said the Lord Yahweh Shiao Shav hosts. Okay? So, hey, uh, let's get another one. Prove that. Let's go here. Because, um, I wanna, let's see. I'm going to start at verse 27. Jeremiah 47 and 27. Yeah, I'll start at verse 27. As, you know, verse 28 makes the point, but I'll start at verse 27. But fear not, thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed from the land, See from the land of their captivity. So the Lord is going to save us from our captivity. This ain't talking about all nations. All nations didn't go in captivity. Not even those 1948ers over there in the land of Israel, man. That's claimed to be us. They didn't go into captivity. The children of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. You the one that went into captivity. You the one that's in captivity. Okay. Jeremiah 15 and verse 33. Okay, I'm going to get that in a minute. Um, Yeah. And Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, said the Lord Yahweh Shah. For I will, for I am with thee. For I will make a full end of all the nations whither I have driven thee. That don't sound like the Lord is coming back to save everybody. No, you got Christian church teaching that the Israelites are done away with. The Lord doesn't have people. Everybody can be saved. Everybody can be an Israelite. That is not true, man. Far from the truth. Okay? All right. Let's see. But I will not, but I will not make a full end of thee, but, but correct thee in measure. Ye will, ye will, like, yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished, man. So, hey, the Lord is coming back to say Israel. Okay? There are many scriptures to prove that. Uh, let's see. Those Psalms 94 and 15. Let's prove that. Uh, actually, it's 14. It's knocking. Psalms 94 and 14. I know I'm all over the place, but that's okay. <clears throat> Psalms 94 and 14. For the Lord Yahweh shall not cast off his people, neither will he forsaken he will forsake his inheritance. There you go. The Lord has not cast away his people, man. Okay. Let's get to one more. Get back to the lesson. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord Yahweh shall with an everlasting salvation. Yet Ye, like, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. That's what that world is talking about. It ain't talking about the whole world. It's talking about Israel. Okay? And if you go into that world, alright, in uh the Greek, in uh in the New Testament, that's cosmos, man. It's talking about a nation, a group of people. Okay. Let's continue. Uh let's see. Let's get this. Since I mentioned it earlier. Second Israel chapter 6 and verse 7. Then answer I and said, What shall be the pardon asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? 
And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, because Esau is ruling right now. Job 9.24 says, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Who's the wicked? Esau ain't him. All right. Malachi 1 4 says that Esau is the border of wickedness. Okay. So we're in their world, their rulership. They are ruling now. They're ruling, well, for now. All right. Because their kingdom is falling. All right. And Jacob is the beginning of it that fallen. Okay. So Jacob's about to rule next. And these devils don't want that. Okay. And they know what's coming. That's why they're trying to push forth that new world order. All right. Because they know, <laughs> they know their time is up. Snuck in to that. All right. They know their time is up. Let's get this. Yes. Psalms 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, Yahweh, Shai, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. They were saying, tear it down, man. Okay? Oh, daughter of Babylon. That goes to show you that Japheth is not ruining the daughter of Babylon. Esau Edom is. Okay? Esau Edom is ruining the daughter of Babylon. And what's that? America. Who art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that, that, that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh it and dasheth it thy little ones against the stones. All right, everything they done to the children of Israel is gonna be done back to them double. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's get this. Psalms two and eight. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. So we're gonna inherit the whole earth, man. All right, and the heathen is going to be our inheritance, and the earth is going to be our possession. The heathen is going to be our possession. Esau Edom is going to be our possession. All right, and it's going to be done righteously. Okay, verse 9 Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Okay, we're going to rule. The whole earth, man. And a lot of you and a lot of you Jays don't have a ruling mentality, man. Revelations two and twenty six. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I get power over the nations. You see? We're gonna rule over the nations, man. Okay? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter's shall they be broken to shivers even as i have received even as i received of my father okay all right let's see let's get this this is uh, Psalm 75, and let's see. Actually, I'm going to start up at verse 6. For a promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But Yahweh is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another, you see? And let's prove that. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel 4. Not snucky. Daniel 5, Daniel 4, and 16. Let's prove that. Or is it Daniel? It's not okay. Daniel 4 and 17. I'm sorry. Daniel 4 and 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set it up, set it up over it the basis of men. He set these devils up to rule over us, man. And who's the base of man? Esau, Edom. Because they came from the caves. They're from the cognitive mountains of the caves. All right? From Mount Seir and Petra. Okay? They're ruling now. Okay? So, hey, pretty soon, they ain't going to be ruling. Let's go back to Psalms. Psalms 
Psalm 75 and verse. I'm going to read verse 7 again. For Yahweh is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. See? And he's putting down Esau's kingdom and he's setting up the righteous kingdom, which is going to be ruled by King Yahushai, our brother King Yahushai, then King David, the 12 apostles, and the 144,000 ruling judges. Okay? Verse 8, for in the hand of the Lord Yahweh there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture. He that poureth out of the same, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. There you go. You see? So, hey, uh, I'm going to read I'm gonna read verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> But I will declare forever, I will sing praises unto the God of Jacob, okay? The power of Jacob, which is Yahweh, okay? All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off. So the Lord, Yahweh, is about to cut off the horns of the wicked, man, which is Esau, Edom. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Who's the horns of the righteous? The elect, okay? Starting with the 144,000. Okay, those are the horns of the righteous shall be exalted, and we're about to be exalted on the whole earth. Okay, mm, let's see. Uh, let's get this because, like I say, these devils are gonna have to receive double for what they've done. Revelation 13 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. Who led us away in the captivity? The Edomites, man, and the other heathen nations. Okay? He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Esau, even the so-called white man, has done a lot of killing since he's been on earth, man. Ever since he's been in rulership. Okay? He's done a lot of killing. A lot of genocide. And he's got to pay for that. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. The saints are patiently and faithfully waiting to put those in captivity that put them in captivity and to kill those that have killed them. Not my words. This is the words of the Lord. All right. And you know what? Let's go to Revelations 18. Um, I'm going to just get straight to the point. Revelations 18, 6. <clears throat> reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. So, hey, America is going to have to pay double. Babylon the Great is going to have to pay double. Edomites are going to have to pay double. Hey, for what they have done to the children of Israel, man. Okay? Not my words. Let's get this. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Be because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. And who has done that? Who's gotten any riches by deceit? Who raped, robbed, and murdered? Esau, even the so-called white man. They've done that. Okay? Dealing unrighteous dealings and injuries by murdering that came over here and took over this land. Took it from Gad, Reuben, and Simeon, okay? And, of course, the so-called uh, Latino tribes, the uh, Issachar, and all the other Latino and Native Americans. And, hey, they took over this land. They killed, they raped, they robbed, they murdered. And also conquered the whole world, too, where Jacob was ruling. Because Jacob was ruling all over the earth, man. They did that through rape, robbery, and murder, man. The Edomites. And hey, the Edomites got a lot to pay for, okay? Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So the kingdom is about to be translated from Esau, Edom, to Jacob, the Israelites, man, okay? Mm, yeah, let's get this. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. 
Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Our punishment is almost up, all right? Our captivity is almost up, brothers and sisters, all right? <clears throat> he will no more carry thee away into captivity. This is our last captivity. He ain't going to serve underneath no more under no more heathens and Gentiles, the whole earth is going to be given back into our hands. We're going to have all, we're going to have everything, all the abundance. We're going to have everything. And the other heathen nations, including Esau, they ain't going to have nothing. All right? Nothing is coming to them but slavery. All right? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He, sh he will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Edom is being visited as we speak, okay? And hey, their punishment is about to get worse. Jeremiah 30 and 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. All my adversaries. When we read that in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, the adversaries of Israel. All right, every one of them, not some of them, not a few of them, but all of them, every one of our adversaries shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Verse 17, for I will restore health unto thee and will heal thee from thy wounds. Said the Lord Yahweh because they called thee an outcast. The whole, all these nations said that the children of Israel, the true children of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and of course you speckled bird Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen. They say you're an outcast, man. They say you're nothing. Okay, they saying that the people over there in Israel are the true people of the Lord when they don't even fit the prophecies, man. Revelations 2, 9, 3, and 9, okay? The synagogues of Satan, okay? They say you, they saying that we are an outcast. We're nothing. We're black. We're African Americans. We're Latino Americans, Native Americans, Hispanic, Puerto, Puerto Ricans. All these bywords that was put on us, man, to hide our true identity. And hey, now we're waking up to who we are. And these heathen and Gentile nations, they're scared, man. They're terrified because they know as soon as we wake up, their time is up. They know it. All right. Let me read this again. For I will restore help unto thee and will heal thy and snuck, and will heal thee from thy wounds, said the Lord Yahweh Shai, because they had called because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is I who no man seeketh after. Okay? Let's see. Let's go here. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord Yahweh Shai will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The Israelite foreigners, okay, that will scatter amongst the heathen and Gentile nations. All right, so the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob and will choose Israel, man. He ain't dealing with all nations. This ain't talking about all nations going to be saved. No. Verse 2. And the people, which is the Israelites, shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel. And oh, let me point out another thing. See, the Lord said he's going to set us in our own land. Not some Belfort Declaration. So that goes to show you that the people in Israel are not the true people of the Lord, man. Okay? So those are not the people. <laughs> there you go. All right, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh Shai for service and handmaid. So the other heathen and Gentile nations, including Esau, Edom, is going to be servants and handmaids unto Israel. All right, proving that this has not happened yet. Okay? And they shall take them captives 
whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Who is our oppressor? Number one oppressor, Esau Enum. All right? Man. This is Isaiah 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of their fathers. The iniquity of their fathers. Who, who's that? Talking about Esau Edom. Okay? They got to pay for what their forefathers did to us, man. Okay? You need at least know this stuff, man. They put this stuff in your face, man. If you've seen the movie The Hunt, these at least know who they got in captivity. Because they put it in your movies, man. Okay? Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the faces of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, said the Lord Yamashiach Shah host, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, said the Lord Yamashiach Shah. See? That hasn't happened yet, but it's about to. Okay? Obadiah. Verse 15, for the day of the Lord, Yahweh Yahshua, is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. So everything that the heathen, including Esau, has done unto the children of Israel, is going to be returned back up on them. All right? Esau is going to receive double of that punishment. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall be snuggy and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. They had not been. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. The monument of Israel, man. Let's talk about the Israelites. Okay. And there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We're going to possess everything. Everything that the heathen and Gentile nations have taken, everything that Esau has, we're going to possess it. Everything, including earth. Okay? Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Yahweh has spoken it. After the thousand years of slavery, Esau, Edom, the Edomites are going to be rounded up after the thousand years of slavery. And hey, they're going to be burnt off the face of the earth. They're going to be seen or heard from again. Okay? There you go. Let's get this last scripture and I'm going to close it out. Lord, when I pray this lesson was edifying. All right, hope it gives you hope, okay? And to the other heathen and Gentile nations, well, I hope it hurts your feelings, and I don't care. Let's read this last scripture, and I'm going to close it out. Psalms 149, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them, let them say aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's talking about the elites going into captivity first. All right. Which are the Edomites. Those banking families. They're going to be the first fruits of slavery first. Because the lower level, your average Joe Edomites, they're going to be, they're going to, they're going to be dead. They're gonna uh, they're gonna die on this side, okay, by thermonuclear destruction. They ain't gonna survive this up and coming destruction that's coming. Alright. But uh the banking families, they're gonna survive this whole thing because they got doomsday bunkers ready to go. And they're gonna run and they're gonna hide. But guess what? You ain't gonna be able to hide. Cause hey, once the elect get those spiritual powers, and once we get changed into them new bodies. We coming back down, we coming, and we're going to grab your ass out of them caves, and y'all asses are going into captivity. Thus says the scriptures, man. Okay? Like it says right here in verse 8. To bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor hath all his saints. Praise ye the glory of Yahweh and Yahshua. Okay? So there you go. Um... 
that's pretty much it, man. All right. So go away and I pray this lesson was edifying. I hope it was edifying to the elect of Israel. I hope you were edified. I hope you hope this, you know, lift up your spirit. All right. Because this thing, like I said, it's going to be done righteously. All right. Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. All right. Seeing it is a righteous thing to recompense those that have troubled you. So it's going to be done righteously, man. Okay. This is a righteous, <laughs> a righteous punishment. So with that, I'm going to close out by giving all praises and honor and glory that's due to you. How about Shin Yon Shai, about Shin Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone rule well. And as always, we get peace and citation to the whole feeling like that's scattered abroad. See you with another lesson soon, Lord willing. Kwam Yon Shin Ranga, Shang Awam, and Wai Ababa Destruction to this wicked ass kingdom. Shang Awam.